Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the RCS EV. This week we're going to talk all about running costs. I've done about just over 6,000 miles in this car. I'll just flip the screen around now and you can see there, so nearly 7,000 actually. So with nearly 7,000 miles done, I've decided to put all my costs that I've experienced so far, times more by 10, that'll give you a rough 70,000 miles, which you know most people could do in four years if you're an average user. So stay tuned and I'm going to tell you all about how much this thing has cost me to run. Now, there are some caveats. I have not included car cost because this car, say, is worth £50,000. It depends what you buy. If I go and buy a Audi for £51,000, and that's more expensive. But if I go and buy a Peugeot 106 for £12,000 then that's less. It's all down to personal preference. So I've, I've left that out because I could have bought a cheap one of these. On that note, I've also left insurance out because that depends completely on the car, where you live, what job you have, what your neighbours do. And last but not least, I've also left out depreciation again because that's so linked to the purchase price of the car. So they're the caveats. I've based it on an ice car doing 40 miles to the gallon. That's what my old car did. I think that's a fair comparison. Again, I could have done it on a 106 or something that does 70 miles to the gallon. I don't think that's comparable though to this car that does a 0 to 60 in say five seconds. So I've done it on my old car because actually that was pretty quick. That was a three litre diesel. So it's not exactly an extravagant V8 engine either. It's actually quite an economical three litre diesel that over three years of owning it, I did 40 to the gallon. So that's what I based it on. So the things I'm going to talk to you today is the fuel costs, so whether that's electricity or diesel or petrol, uh, the tax, including the increase in tax that will soon be coming along to EVs, so that's all taken care of, and also servicing and tyres, because these are all things that you have to do to your car that, again, aren't down to personal choice. And I've taken my costs that I've done, as you've seen, over nearly 7,000 miles. I have actually recorded every single cost in terms of how much electricity I put into this, extrapolated up the miles and then times it by the miles to the gallon and at the time that I charged my car how much the fuel price was at that split second. So I think the fuel price ranges from top end £1.70 a litre down now to about £1.40 a litre. Yeah it can go down, yeah it can go up. But what I actually told someone last week, before anyone starts going, oh, but what happens if electricity goes up? If my electric bill goes up, I'm fixed for another 10 months. It stays the same. If the four quart price went up by 40p tomorrow, you haven't got a choice. So actually, I think it's better. At least I'm fixed and I've effectively hedged my fuel for the next 10 months. And then you'll probably say, oh, but what happens if it goes down? Well, I'm with Octopus, and actually, they put it down as soon as it goes down, so it's kind of a win-win for me. But anyway, enough of that, getting into it. So the biggest cost, obviously, a part of this, is the fuel. So electricity, and around 25% of this was on Tesla supercharging as well, which I get for free on this car, but I've looked the price up, and I've added it as if it wasn't free. So I think it's 55p a kilowatt, so it's quite expensive. But the electricity for this car up until now has cost me £324.14p. and p 300 pounds it's simple maths 50 quid to do a thousand miles 50 pounds for a thousand it's it's cheap isn't it and now if i did that for a diesel my diesel equivalent doing 40 miles to the gallon the cost is £1,257. That is £70 off a £1,000 difference of 6,000 miles. £1,000! If I now times that all by 10 to give 66,000 over four years, give or take, you're looking at nearly 10 grand. 10 grand! You're saving about Two, nearly two and a half grand a year, 2,400, 2,300 pounds per year on just the stuff you use to make the wheels go round. This is insane. So the tax, 
the road tax on this as it stands is zero until 2025 i completely agree with that in 2025 this is going to start costing me a fair bit of money well actually over the next two years that i'll still have it for it's going to cost me about 710 pounds total in tax for this car for a diesel car i actually made this even cheaper so if you bought my car new it was something like 500 quid in tax but i know that mine only used to be 240 so i've done it based on 240 just to make it even fairer so that's 960 over the four years so this is a little bit tighter there's only about 250 quid in it compared to, comparing the two for road tax so it's closer or we'll added to the comparison think bike as always now servicing so obviously tesla don't make uh, petrol or diesel cars so what i've done is i went on uh, bmw's website main dealer website and put in servicing and luckily i found there were three options for your cars number one was for a petrol or a fev that's a plug-in hybrid and per year for the service pack, it was £802. For a diesel, I'm actually quite staggered by this, £1,136. For what? For oil? It is massive. And then for their EVs, £376. So over the four years, I've done the maths, I've used the petrol one because it's cheaper, again, to make it even fairer. And over the four years, on petrol, it's just over 3,200. On electric, it's 1,500. So on the four years, you're gonna save another 1,700 pounds. 1,700 in servicing, that's over 400 pounds a year. So last but not least, tires. Now, I've not gone budget on one car, premium on another what i've done is this car has michelin ev sport tire things on them and i then picked the same michelin tire if it was a non-ev same size wheel again because you could get a car with little dustbin lids that are 15 inches or you could get a crazy pimp wagon with 28 inch wheels so this is done on 20 inch tires for the ev tires over the four years, I've thought two sets all the way around, so eight tyres total, £2,300. For the non EV tyres, it's £2,015. So there actually is a bit of a saving to be had. I imagine these are designed to increase range and whatnot. But I guess if you put these tyres on a normal car, then that would make that more efficient as well. I don't know, if there's a tyre expert, leave a comment. It'd be quite good to know that. So, the grand totals. The grand totals for the fuel for the car, the tax, the servicing and the tires, the big things, come to. For the EV, 7,763 pounds and 40 pence. For the petrol car, using the cheapest numbers on all of those four items, Eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty-five pounds. I've done the maths for you already. The difference is ten thousand nine hundred and ninety-one pounds. The best part of two hundred and thirty, two hundred and forty pounds per month, every month. Imagine if someone said that. Here you are, sir. You can have this car or this car, but this one is eleven grand cheaper for running it. God, you'd go for it, wouldn't you? And before some of you ask, because I can hear someone who tap tap tapping in the background saying, Oh, but what have you got a more efficient car that does 60 miles to the gallon? Well, I've already done the sums for that. And that still works out at nearly six grand more, 5,841 for that fact. So even going up to 60 miles to the gallon, you're still not better off. I'm gonna do some sums now. I'm gonna put them on the screen of how many miles to the gallon you'd need to do to equal what this car can do. 
it's just a no-brainer. For me, it's an absolute no-brainer. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Effectively, what I've told you is what you can expect over the four-year running costs of a car like this to the 66,000 miles based on what I've done so far. As always, if you've enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe, smash the thumbs up button, turn on the notifications to receive an update about when the next weekly video is coming out. Bye.